You awake yet? I rubbed my eyes, turning my head towards the doorway to see my dad standing in the doorway in his usual blue overalls and white shirt. Well, uh, I am now. I replied in a groggy and tired voice. Not late for school, am I? Without saying a word, he gestured for me to follow him before turning around and heading back down the stairs. Quickly, I got out of bed, knowing from his blank facial expression that my dad was clearly upset. I picked up the pace in an attempt to catch up with my father, who was already out the door. Now at his side, I slowed down my pace to take in the beautiful sunny morning as we walked into the pig pen. When we got to the entrance to the pen, my father stopped walking. I followed suit. He got down on one knee right next to me as to be on my eye level and pointed inside the pen. Anything seem odd to you? I was about to reply no when I noticed what he was referring to. There were only four pigs inside the pen, when there were usually five. My heart sank when I remembered that I was the one who closed the pen last night. My father turned his head toward me. Tell me. Slowly, I turned to face him, worried that I would be punished for my mistake. Did you let one of the pigs get out? No, I stuttered the reply. I never make such a mistake. My father continued to stare intently at me with his doubtful eyes, making me more and more nervous each second he held his glance. Finally, he pushed himself up and looked up at the sky, and then back down to me. We'll talk about this later. You got school to go to. <sighs> I breathed a big sigh of relief as he walked by me, and back into the house. I'd have some hours of school before whatever punishment awaited me. Before walking back into the house, I turned to the pen in front of me and began to wonder how one of the pigs managed to get out. I could have sworn I locked the gate tight. Oh well, it didn't matter. I went back inside the old wooden house and headed straight for the kitchen. There, my mom was making breakfast in her favorite red apron. She turned her head to me and smiled. Heard you let one of the pigs out, she said in her deep southern accent. Yeah. I responded in a disappointed tone. I don't know how I managed to even... My mother raised her hand as a gesture to stop speaking, which I followed. It's okay, she started. I know it was an accident. Your father knows that too. He's just a bit cranky for now, that's all. Having been reassured by her, I smiled and thanked my mom. No problem, baby. She replied in her usual upbeat and happy tone. Now come on, I made you breakfast. Finishing my breakfast, I changed out of my pajamas I had worn the night before into more presentable attire. After getting all ready, I sat on my bed and started shifting through my backpack in order to make sure I had everything. Homework, folders, oh yeah, I almost forgot. I got up and went over to my dresser and opened the bottom drawer. I pushed away some clothes to the bottom of the dresser where it sat. Pepper spray? I picked up the pepper spray and stuffed it in my back pocket. There were some rowdy teenagers that liked to scare kids like me while we walked to and from school. I managed to get my hands on some pepper spray without either of my parents knowing, just in case the teenagers ever get more violent. After ensuring that I was all set, I made my way downstairs. Bye, honey. Have a good day at school, my mom said as I walked out the door. Thanks, Mom. I'll try. As I closed the door behind me, I walked down the old wooden steps to our porch, each making a creak as I stepped on it. I was about to make my way down the road when I stopped, due to a question that had just popped up in my mind. Would pepper spray really be enough to stop them? I asked myself aloud. Sure, I'd be able to stun one of them for a good second, but that would just make them angrier. As I questioned the power of my pepper spray, a new idea popped into my head. Feeling a small smirk come across my face, I turned over to the large cornfield in front of our house. I could easily walk through the corn to hide from any miscreants looking to cause me harm. I thought it was quite clever of me to think of such an idea. I made up my mind. I was going to walk through the field to get to school. Sure, I wouldn't be able to walk the entire way to school through the corn, but I'd surely be able to walk a good distance in it given its large size. I strode into the deep cornfield, pushing away any stalk that stood in my way. After walking for about a minute, I began to find the walk rather calming. It was just me my own thoughts, and the endless sea of corn. I stopped for a moment to fully bask in the relaxing isolation. I took a deep breath as I stared up at the bright blue sky. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. 
Breathe in, breathe. My slow breathing stopped. My eyes widened. Did I really just hear something or was my mind playing tricks on me? I heard it again. No, my mind was not playing tricks on me. There was something else in here. I was horrified. What could possibly be out here with me? Could it be the bullies? Could it be a wild animal? Could it be the pig? Wait, wait, the pig? The thought of the pig being the source of the sound filled me not with dread, but with hope. Hope that I could redeem myself to my father and avoid punishment. I wasn't foolish, though. I knew that it was entirely possible that whatever this thing was, it could be dangerous. And so I cautiously tiptoed over there with my pepper spray in my right hand, just in case. As I got closer to the sound, it became clear that it was eating something. Probably the corn. I soon got even closer and began to hear the swarming of flies. I pushed away the corn stalks as I began to pick up the pace. Sure that I was going to find the lost pig, a large smile formed across my face as I pushed away the last of the corn that blocked my vision. My smile quickly faded. At my feet was the pig, its stomach torn open and its innards spilt out. The flies swarmed over the carcass, eager to lay their eggs in its wounds. The only thing worse than the fate of the hog was what was kneeling over it, eating what remained. A humanoid figure with brown, leathery skin was chewing at the meat left on the pig's bones, causing a crunching sound. I let out a loud gasp, which caused this abomination to look up at me with its deformed face and black, sunken eyes. The monstrosity stopped its face to lunge at me. Thankfully, I was quick enough to spray it in the eyes, making it let out a screech of pain and stop mid-lunge. I used this to my advantage and began to run from it as far as I could. I heard that thing start to run behind me, somehow being able to catch up with me. I could hear its raspy grunts as it slowly came closer, soon sounding like it was right next to me. It swiped, pulling my backpack off instead of clawing me. Afterwards, it soon lost interest in me and stopped its hunt as soon as I got out of the cornfield. I leapt onto the hard concrete floor, finally away from that beast. I tried to get back up, but my body had used up all of its energy to get me out of the cornfield, and that I had no more to keep running. I rolled over onto my back, my chest pounding, and my lungs racing. I slowly poked my head up to look back at the cornfield. I slowly poked my head up to look back into the cornfield. And there was nothing. There was nothing but an endless sea of corn. <laughs>